Hey guys, your casual gamer here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the original PlayStation emulator, DuckStation. So here we are on the homepage of DuckStation.org. The link to this page is in the description below. Once you're here, go ahead and click on Windows. If you don't already have Visual C++ installed on your PC, go ahead and download that first. But if you do, you can go ahead and download Duck. If you don't already have 7-Zip installed on your PC, go ahead and download this program as well. This is what we're going to use to extract the emulator. The link to this page is in the description below. So here's the downloaded DuckStation compressed file on my desktop. We now need to extract it using 7-Zip. So if you already have 7-Zip installed, all you want to do is right click on the file, go to show more options, go up to 7-Zip and extract to DuckStation. This will create a new folder containing all of your extracted files. You no longer need the zip file so we can right click on that and delete it. Let's go ahead and open this folder. And we're gonna create a new folder in here. Right click, new folder, and rename this folder BIOS. Now I cannot tell you guys where to get a PS1 BIOS file, but if you do a Google search, I'm pretty sure you will find a few. Now when you do find a BIOS file, this is what it should look like. And it will need to be extracted. So go ahead and right click on your BIOS, show more options, 7-zip, and extract here. Go ahead and delete the zip folder, and your BIOS file should read scph1001.bin. Now let's go ahead and move this file into that folder we just created called BIOS. Now we can go ahead and open the emulator and that will be this file here. So when you first open the emulator, you will see no games in supported formats were found. We're gonna go ahead and click on add game directory, but first I'm gonna show you how to extract a PS1 ROM. So for an example, I have Crash Bandicoot 2 here that needs to be extracted. Let's go ahead and right click on it, show more options, go up to 7-zip and extract the Crash Bandicoot 2. Now we have our extracted folder. We no longer need the zip file, so we can right click on that and delete it. Now if we open this folder, click on this folder, and you will see a bin and Q file. I also have Spyro the Dragon on my desktop. Let's go ahead and create a new folder. And I'm just gonna call it PS1 Games. And let's drag these two games into that folder. Now reopen the emulator and let's go ahead and click on add game directory. Locate wherever you have your PS1 games at. In my case, I just created a folder on a desktop called PS1 games right here. And there's both of my games, my Crash Bandicoot 2 and Spyro the Dragon. I'm going to select folder and then it's going to ask, would you like to scan the directory? Yes. And there we are. Both of my games have been added to the emulator. Now your games will be listed in a list view, but if you wanna see them in the grid view, click on this icon right here. And what you can actually do with each game is you can add cover art. And if you need cover art, you can head over to this site here, steamgridb.com, link in the description below. And you can go ahead and click in the search bar and type in the name of whatever game you want to get some cover art. So let's look up Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. And you can browse through the photos they give you and pick one. I'll do this one here, and then we can come over here and hit download. Right click, save image as. And I'm just gonna save the picture to my desktop. But what you guys may want to do is create a dedicated folder to hold all of your pictures. Back over on the emulator, now what you wanna do is right click on that game, go to set cover image, locate wherever you have that image downloaded, now it would be nice if the emulator could go through and automatically add cover art to each game, but it can't, so this is what you would have to do. And now let's set up our BIOS. Let's go up to settings, BIOS, under BIOS directory, select browse, and now go ahead and locate wherever you have your BIOS installed. In my case, I created a new folder within that DuckStation folder called BIOS. Select the folder and then hit select folder. Now, if you come up here to BIOS selection and hit all three of these drop down arrows, you should see your BIOS file. That lets you know that you have a working BIOS. Now, if you look over here to the left, you'll see display. Let's go ahead and select that. 
For the renderer, I'm going to leave it at hardware 11 because this emulator gives me no issues, but if you're having issues while playing games, you may want to come back here and play around with each one of these renderers to see which one works best for you. For the adapter, you can leave this on default. If your PC has a graphics card, the emulator will automatically use that graphics card. But to make sure that the emulator is using your graphics card, you can go ahead and change this to your graphics card so that it doesn't try to use your CPU's graphics. Leave full screen mode on borderless full screen. And we're gonna go ahead and turn on V-Sync so we don't get any screen tear. For the aspect ratio, if you just leave it on auto, game native, it will play in a 4 to 3 aspect ratio, but if you want to play in full screen, then change this to 16 to 9. Now some games may look a little stretched, but this is totally optional and it's up to you. And under on screen display, if you would like any of these to be displayed while you're gaming, then check your preferred box. Now let's go down to enhancements. Internal resolution scale, you can bump this up to 720p, 1080p, 1440p, or 4K. I'm using a 1080p monitor, so I'm just going with 1080p. And for the texture filtering, I'm going to change this to XBR very slow. This will smooth out some of the textures in your game. Everything else here, leave at default settings. And we can go ahead and close. Now we're going to set up our controller. Let's go up to settings and come down to controllers. Now I am using a PS5 controller, a PS4, Xbox, and Xbox Series controller will work as well. And as long as you have a Bluetooth connection with your PC before you open the emulator, the controller is already connected. All you wanna do is click on controller port one. Now if you notice, everything is already mapped out to your keyboard, we wanna change this to our controller. So let's start with the D-pad. For the up button, all you wanna do is click in the box and hit the up button on your controller, left, left button on your controller, right, down, same thing for the left analog stick, and repeat the same thing for all of your buttons. Once you are finished mapping your controller out, go ahead and click on new profile and name that controller setting. I'm just gonna call it player one, okay. Do you want to copy all bindings? Yes. Now, if you have a second controller connected to your PC, you will repeat that same thing for controller port two. Now, there's one more thing we wanna do before we load into a game. Let's go back up to settings, general, and under game display, we're gonna check start full screen. This way, every time you load up a game, that game will start in full screen. Now, let's go ahead and load up Crash Bandicoot 2. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And hopefully I will catch you in the next one. Peace.